Hello everyone, Cat Weasel here, welcome to the channel and welcome back to turn two of A Touch of Evil, The Banshee. Right, a couple of things to clear up from last turn, a couple of clarifications. Uh, first of all, we're going to talk about lingering. Um, I didn't really go through it in any great detail last turn. The main reason for that was I had no intention whatsoever of lingering. So I just sort of scooted across it. But somebody did comment that uh, it wasn't perhaps the clearest. It wasn't. So I'll just go through it now. So lingering means that you still have to roll for movement. Because it may be that you roll a 1. If you roll a 1, then you'll get an event card. And remember, event cards, they're good. So you still roll. It's then that you make a decision about your movement. If you don't move, stay where you are, then you are lingering. But additionally, and this is in addition to what the chat posted, because he wasn't fully clear either, um, you can move and still linger. Because say you roll a 4, move two spaces away and then move two spaces back and end up in the same place that you were so you've moved but you've gone back to where you were that is still lingering so essentially it's got nothing to do with move at all what it has got, a, got <laughs> what it has got a lot to do with is if you are in the same place as you were the previous turn no matter how whether through not moving or moving if you end up in the same place that you were last turn, you are considered to be lingering. And then you roll another dice. If you roll another die and you roll a one, then you will get attacked. So that is what lingering is. So it's not so much the movement. What it is, is if you are in the same place that you were in last turn, then you will have to roll for lingering. Everybody has to roll for movement. Whether you choose to move or not is up to you. Right, so that's that, that out of the way. The other thing was a mistake. Yes, I made a mistake. What it was, it's Sarah the Bright Witch. If you remember, she's got the strength of light. And that means she gets two investigations at the start of a turn. She does lose investigations if the darkness track goes down, but it didn't. I gave her a starting two investigation, but I didn't give her a two investigation for strength of light. So thanks to a pirate who, who noticed that. So she has got four. But no, she's got six because she's going to get two for this turn as well. So she now has six investigation thanks to strength of light. And that's good because we've got to start looking at secrets. It costs us three investigation to look at an elder's secrets. And I think we'll have Sarah the Bright Witch being our person who looks at secrets. Mainly because she will lose investigation every time the Shadow Trap moves. Therefore, it makes sense to me that she does a lot of investigating. She may as well spend whatever investigation she gets as quickly as possible. And she may as well spend them on revealing secrets, I think. So, uh, thinks that's what we'll have her do for a couple of turns at least. Because there are a couple of funky elders that we would like to find out are not evil because they would be very useful to us. So uh, I think that's what she'll do and I think she'll start that this turn. Another thing that was pointed out that um, I hadn't considered, um, but fortunately, um, well, I knew it, but it possible that I, <laughs> I could have forgot it uh, and I didn't make it clear last turn, is about events. Remember Eliza the Witch Hunter? She got an event just to scratch, play this card when any hero um, is about to take a wound to prevent the wound, and it's an event. Any of our three characters can use this card, not just Eliza. Event cards like this can be used by anybody in the hunting party, so that's funky. We'll leave it with Eliza, because she picked it, but any sort of event card can be played by anyone. Obviously... That doesn't apply to the pendant because that's an item and that is physically with Valeria. So she is the only one that can play this one. But event cards like that, anybody can play them. So thanks to Glenn for pointing that out. 
because I may well have forgotten it. <laughs> Righty ho! So, first player this turn is going to be Valeria, the Eternal. So let's get across to the board and specifically at the abandoned keep and let's crack on with the hero phase. And here we are at Shadowbrook, and here is Valeria. Now, she's got to roll for movement regardless, so she is going to. And she gets a four, which is fine. But she's going to spend one investigation, because she is going to use the secret passage and go to Smuggler's Cove. So we didn't stay here very long. Let's pop across to Tidewater. And here we are with Valeria at Smuggler's Cove. Apologies if you can hear a fan in the background. And that's a like a, an air conditioning fan, not a screaming like groupie. Uh, the reason for that is it is hot. I'm at the back of the house, we've got double glazing, it's boiling. I'm sorry, you're going to have to put up with it because otherwise... <laughs> I wouldn't be doing the episode anymore. It's roasting. So hopefully it isn't too bad. I do apologise. Right. Um, Valeria. Yes. She's now at the Smuggler's Cove. So the first thing she's got to do is she's got to check if there are any minions. There aren't. Super. Next thing, she's going to encounter the space. So Smuggler's Cove deck, which is this sort of dark grey greeny deck. So let's give it a shuffle. And see what we come up with. A cave worm. Fight dice for oh, wound six. Cave worm only hits on a six. Well, I suppose that's something instead of a five or a six. But every roll of six counts as two hits. Brilliant. If defeated, you gain eight investigation. Well, I don't think we've got much chance. But let's do it anyway. Right. She's not having much luck, is she, Valeria? I don't know. These undead. So it's four hit dice for the cave worm. And she gets three. She's got combat three. I don't think she has to use spirit or anything. Or does she? Because it's got the word minion. It does have the word minion. I think it's not. I'm going to take it that the minions are the ones that are actually on the minion chart. This is just like another sort of thing, I think. So, so I think she does get. She doesn't have to use spirit to fight on this one. I don't think. I don't think so. So she can use three combat. Right. Oh. Tell me if that's wrong. But she's had it anyway. Look at that. Three ones. What a load of rubbish. A six. A six is two. Is it? Yeah, two hits. So we can't even use just a scratch. What a load of rubbish. Right. <laughs> so she's been knocked out. Ugh. Damn it. Alright, let's discard that been knocked out now I've got a roll of dice to find if um, I better don't roll a one now how many investigation and stuff she loses yes I rolled another one Phew. so we managed to keep loveless pendant we only have to get rid of one investigation she gets rid of all the wounds because she's been knocked out I'm in there put that in there so we've got to move her down to the town square, which is here. And turn her on her side, because she's been knocked out. Well, we're not doing very well, are we? We're a load of old pants. So uh, I don't think she does anything else now in the game round. Because she's been knocked out. But at least being knocked out in the hero phase means that she can stand up during the mystery phase. So uh, it's not quite as bad as getting knocked out in the mystery phase. <clears throat> right. So after that auspicious start, let's move on to our next player, 
who is Eliza the Witch Hunter. And here's Eliza the Witch Hunter. One thing I did forget, it doesn't matter because we got beat anyway. But all minions get plus one combat because of full moon. I only gave it four dice. It should have had five dice, that cave worm. But it doesn't matter because it kicked our ass anyway. So I should have remembered that. But all of you were tapping away there to go, ah, you missed that. Yes, I did miss it, but only for a few seconds. Okay, Eliza, the witch hunter. So she's got a roll for movement. And we'll make a decision on what she's going to do once she has. He says, throwing the dice on the floor. Try again. Six. Immense. Fantastic. She can pretty much go up wherever she wants in Shadow Brook. That's great. While I'm carrying that over there, I'll probably need it. Charlotte, six. So where should she go? Righty ho. Now, if we're going to fight the Banshee all the time with, is it Spirit? Right, a couple of things. <laughs> I should have done this as soon as like she got knocked out, Valeria. Um, I, should have, I should have done this. I should have checked on here. Anybody gets knocked out, an Elder or anybody, always check your villain because there's normally something that happens. Anytime a hero is KO'd, which has just happened, We've got a plus one wound marker. So we're going to put that on. Remember, I don't have to times that by three, but it does mean that the Banshee is now at 13 wounds, which is bad. No! And, in addition, because somebody got knocked out, we've got to move the shadow track along, I believe. So there we go. And because the shadow track has gone along one, One investigation goes to Valeria, because she gets plus one, but Sarah, Sarah's lost one because the shadow track's gone up. Right, I think, I think I've remembered everything now, so we'll put the Banshee back. I have a feeling she's going to end up with a hell of a lot more wounds. Right, oh yes. Do we fight with spirit? No. It's just barrel shades we fight with spirit. The banshee we fight with normal combat. So, I believe I got a tip. Got a tip from Stasia who said that uh, like there are certain things on the board that improve um, things. Um, what things? Yes, that's brilliant. That's really clear. They improve stats and abilities, that's what I mean. Things. And the specific to like areas. So for example, the manor is quite good for spirit. I believe. So I think it's the abandoned keep that's quite good for combat. I'm just gonna check that now. It's a good job I checked because it's the old woods. <laughs> so thanks for the tip, Stasia. So it's gonna go one two three four five six so we just had enough to get to the old wood so great news that she rolled a six fantastic are there any minions there no they're not so next thing we need to encounter the space so let's zoom in and encounter the space so here we are at the old woods let's get the old woods deck unsurprisingly a green deck Let's see if she can have any more luck than poor old Valeria has had. Right. Cut the deck. And we get... This doesn't look good. You can see bones. Trail of bones. Investigation. Dragged across the autumn forest floor, a trail of bones and black feathers stretches its way off into the shadows. Make a spirit 3 plus test and gain one investigation for each 3 plus roll. Well, it hasn't increased anything. It hasn't increased our combat, but at least it's not too nasty. Spirit 3 plus, a spirit is 4. That's good news. 
So you increase the spirit last turn to four. So that's not bad at all. Let's get four dice. Come on, we only need a three or better. Pants. So <laughs> we only got two investigation. But it's better than a slap across the belly with a wet kipper. So she's now up to four investigation. And she has encountered the space, so let's discard that card. It was an old woods card. Do do. Nice. Move that a bit out of the way. So she's now got four investigation. What can she do? Well, she's got a wound. She does have a wound. So for three investigation, she could heal that wound. But she could also investigate an elder for three. All the rest of final air cards start showdown, exchange any cards or whatever don't count. So it's whether we get a secret or we get rid of that wound. Well, I'm planning to keep her on the Shadowbrook board so she could always go to the doctor's office where it only costs one investigation to heal a wound. That's the plan. So let's spend three and investigate a town elder, shall we? So she has to pay three investigation because you've got to pay one for however many investigators you have. And we have three, so she's paying three. Because she's in Shadowbrook, let's have a look at one of the Shadowbrook secrets. Now, the one I'm going to pick, I'm going to pick Sophie, the midwife. Because not only is she absolutely gorgeous, she's a very strong elder. Because look at this. May cancel any mystery card in play or event as it is played on the D6 roll of a 3+. plus. So she's a very strong elder, this one. So anything that we can get rid of a mystery card on would be fabulous. So we're going to have a look at Sophie. So let's put her down there. And let's get her a secret, shall we? Here it is. Right. Dun, dun, dun. Be good, be good, be good. Little secret. Yes! Secret. Manic. A manic sort, the elder's mood and demeanour can change dramatically at the drop of a hat. One moment they are, loose, they are a lucid companion full of bravado and cheer, the next they are slumped in a chair downing another swig of the demon gin. Just goes to show, doesn't it? Don't look like a gin drinker to me. So, this is of no consequence to the investigation, no effect. Fantastic. So she can go back up there. And she is absolutely fine. She's good. Woohoo! So that's brilliant. We know at least one of the uh, elders who are good. So they could join our hunting party later. That is fabulous. Righty ho. So we've done that. Let's check. I'm just going to check over on the player board. Just in case... Um, I think a red. I think a red on one of them that if you find a little secret they get some investigation. I'll just go and check that. In fact, yes it was and it was Eliza as well. For every little secret or evil secret that she reveals she gets four investigation. So that was a little secret. So she has got four investigation. That takes her up now to five. So she's got five investigation, a much better turn than poor old Valeria had, I'm sure you'll agree. So that's cool. As I mentioned, she's got nobody to trade with. She's not going to uh, buy a lair card or any of that malarkey. So next up, it is Sarah, the Bright Witch, and she's up at the manor. And here's Sarah at the manor, but not for long. What we have to roll for, there's no minions, so... We're all right there. So let's roll for movement. A three. That's fine. She doesn't, unfortunately, doesn't get an event card. 
But what she does do is she will spend one of her investigations and she's going to use the secret passage. Secret passage goes to the monastery. So let's get across to the monastery. And here we are, back with Sarah. Right, any minions? No, there's no minions. So first thing we're going to do is we are going to encounter the space. Now, we could buy monastery items here, but we've got no money. Well, we are, but we want to save that. We want to, uh, we want to look at some Elder Secrets, so we'll do that in a bit. Right, so let's encounter the monastery space. Oh. Here's the monastery deck. Give it a whizzy shuffle. And a cut. Let's hope we get something good. Oath of the Hunter. Ooh, she can't seem to escape the Witch Hunter. There she is, Eliza. Looking foxy in a hood. Wound. You gain plus one fight dice against any vampire, ghost or demon. We've got a ghost. The Banshee is a ghost. Brilliant. Limit one oath. Does not count. And it does not count against the carrying limit. That is brilliant. So this doesn't count as a monastery card, from what I can see. Again, if I'm wrong there, let me know. But it seems like good old uh, Sarah has got an extra wound, which takes her up to four. And <laughs> she'll be having a bit of a laugh because <laughs> it's off the hunter. I'm sure Eliza wouldn't like the <laughs> wouldn't like to know that she's giving Sarah the Bright Witch an extra wound, but she is. Woohoo! So put that on her player area. Sarah's now got an extra wound. Good stuff. Right, so that's the end of that bit. We're not going to be buying any layer cards, initiating any showdowns, or doing any sort of swapping or trading, but she does have four investigation. So she's going to spend three. Let's have a look at some more town elders, shall we? So who shall we look at? Now, when you turn these things over, I believe that it's all the secrets. So why don't we have a look at one of the Tidewater secrets, I think? The reason for that is they've got two secrets, so turn them over now before they get any more. Um, I thought about doing that last time, but Sophie's really good, and the fact was um, Eliza was in Shadowbrook, so it just made thematic sense to me to turn over one of those. Sarah's in the monastery. There are no elders uh, associated with the Echo Lake board, but that's what we're going to do anyway. And let's pick one of the, you know, we've done one for Shadowbrook. Let's do one for Tidewater. Who are we going to pick? So it's Mayor Carver, the Widow Jessica, or the Harbour Master. Let's roll a dice. So on a one to two, we'll look at Mayor Carver. On a two, on a three to four, the Widow Jessica, and on a five to six, the Harbour Master. I'm not really sure which is the better, um, what's the word, the better town elder. The only one I knew was a good one was Sophie. So, like I say, I haven't played the game before. So, rather than Fleming sit here going, oh, is it that or is it this? Let's just do it like, um, <laughs> let's just do it randomly. So, one to two for Mayor Carver, three to four for Jessica, and five to six for the Harbour Master. Three, it's the Widow Jessica. Right. Uh. Oh, here's the widow Jessica. So let's have a look. Yeah, she doesn't look very happy. Oh, six spirit, that's good. One cunning, four honor. At the start of every fight round, heal any wounds you have on the D6 roll of a three plus each. You know what? That is brilliant. So, um, I, perhaps I should have picked this one anyway. So, that is pretty good. So, the Widow Jessica. So, put her there. 
Now, let's find out the bad news. Secret number one. A little secret. Drunkard. Lot behind closed doors, this town elder drinks into a stupor on a nightly basis, often emerging just in time to soil the front stoop. Nice. This is of no consequence in the investigation. Let's just check Sarah doesn't get any sort of investigations like Eliza does. I don't think she does. Nope, she doesn't. So that's just a good one. So second one. Reveal immediately. Well, that doesn't. Re we're playing co-op, so it doesn't really matter. Oh, hero of the people. This town elder immediately joins you. Yes! Place a town elder by your hero character sheet. While they are with you, you gain their special ability. That's the wound thing. Brilliant. And you may use their spirit, cunning or honour instead of your own. She's got a spirit of six. Woohoo! So any sort of spirit roll against like them barrel shades or anything like that. We'll use her good stuff instead of your own for a card effect or test. Anytime the shadow track crosses into a new stage, that means it go. Hang on. See the lines? So if we move over one of these lines, then it crosses to a new stage. Let's see what happens. I think they have to go back to town. Or if you are KO'd, immediately return the elder to town. If this elder is not currently joined with a hero, any hero may put, pay for investigation as an action to have the elder join them. Well, she's joining Sarah, so that's brilliant. Woohoo! So we'll move her from there and put her with Oath of the Hunter. That is fabulous. So that was a fantastic. That was well worth three investigation. Brilliant stuff. Right, so as I say, we're not doing any um, trading or anything like that. We're not buying a lair card or starting a showdown. So I think that is it for her hero phase. And that is it for the hero phase for this turn. So let's get on with the laugh and chuckle phase that is the mystery phase. And here we are at the mystery phase. I've centred on Echo Lake because obviously we've got Sarah up here. We've got the knocks out uh, Valeria here and good old Eliza's here in the old woods. So at least we've got everybody in. Doesn't matter that we've got every single board in. Right, so mystery phase. Let's chant the mantra. Minion movement. Well, we've got no minions, so they can't move anyway. So that's cool. Knocked out heroes are revived. Woohoo! So she stands up. She's got rid of all the wound tokens, so that's cool. Uh, the villain heals. Well, the villain doesn't need to heal. In fact, the villain's got plus one bloody wound last turn, so it's now got a health of 13, which uh, isn't brilliant, but never mind. And after that, we've got roll on the mystery phase chart. Oh. Right, two black dice. Let's find out what the bad news is. Oh. Seven. Let's have a look see. Surge of evil. Fantastic. Roll once on the villain's minion chart and work out the result. If it is a minion or the if the villain attacks, draw a lo random location for placement. <sighs> no! Right. Minion chart. So, one's Echo of the Moors. It's Barrel Shade. So, basically, it's two upwards, because... Oh no, it just says work out the result. So if we get one echo of the moors, we'll get that. Yeah. We got a four. Oh, not the groundskeeper. Groundskeeper Willie's come out. Groundskeeper Willie. He's out. 
So what we've got to do now is we've got to get a random location. So that's a layer card. And, oh, let's shuffle these. I hope it's somewhere crap. <laughs> right, where's he going to go? The fields! Right, well at least there's nobody there. Right. So he's going to the fields. Put that in a discard file. File. Right, just let's check him out first before we move him to the fields. Yeah, Fight Dice 4 is wounds are special as are the victory. Rewards. There's only one groundskeeper. If he's already on the board, blah 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 blah. It's, he wasn't. Um, well, nobody's going to fight him because he's going to the fields, and he's got nobody to fight. So that's all right. So I can ignore that. But there is something. I think. I think the banshee gets slight. Yeah, that's fine. Just let's check the Banshee's card. I have a feeling she's going to get some more wounds. Groundskeeper. While the Groundskeeper minion is on the board, the Banshee has plus two wounds. Brilliant. So, that is now plus three wounds. So, what's that? That's 12, 13, 15 wounds now for the Banshee. She's got 15 health. That's bad. Bad, bad, bad. That is it for, I think, for the mystery phase chart. Yep. Oh, damn, damn. So she's going to have a shed full of, like, health. Okay, right. Well, it's not finished yet either because we've got the mystery deck. Damn. That's mystery deck. I'll keep doing my crap shuffles then. My my cuts. So here we go. Not that it matters with the mystery deck, they're all bad. Veil of Darkness. Brill. <laughs> Look at the eye on that horse. It's the headless horseman. Mystery. While this card is in play. Any time a hero is knocked out, move the shadow track two steps closer to darkness and it remains in play. You know what, I want to get rid of this, but oh, we just haven't got enough. Right, this is going to go. Well, I can't have it galloping along at two every time we get knocked out. Shall I put it on the pendant? I mean, she's back to full health now. She is back to full health, is Valeria. So it's not likely that she's going to get knocked out straight away. We might have to take a bit of a gamble. You may take a wound to place it here instead. That'd give her one wound. Urgh. Is anybody going to get knocked out? Eliza seems fine. Oh, and I tell you what, I am going to do this because it is my first game. Now, when I said Eliza didn't have enough investigation to get rid of a wound, and I don't think you have to do the actions in any particular order. So, she investigated the Elder and got four investigation. So, she does have enough investigation now to spend three and get rid of a wound so yes it's out of order <laughs> I'll phrase that a little bit better some of you may think it's well out of order so it's not in the correct order I should have done it after as soon as she'd um, before we moved out of the hero phase for Eliza but I'm going to allow it because it's my first game she is going to use those three three of those investigation that she got to actually get rid of that wound so she's on 
no wounds now. It just reminded me because I'm thinking about wounds in order to get rid of this veil of darkness. I'm not going to put it on the loveless pendant, not yet. So we've got two remains in play. We've got veil of darkness and full moon. And we've just got to make sure that nobody gets knocked out in the near future. I don't think it says anything about I could put this on the loveless pendant, I think, at any time. I think. It's not like it's been discarded. So again, let me know that. Because I'm not going to do it now, but sometime in the future, like say the um, the darkness tracks running away, and we've still got this, I might put it on then. So let me know, because it remains in play, can I put it on the loveless pendant at any time? I'm not going to do it now, I'm going to let it ride for the time being. So we won't use that. So I'll just have to be extra careful and try and make sure that nobody gets knocked out. Right, so that's the mystery card. Grim. Um, what's the next thing to do? Oh, move the first player token. So first player next turn will be Eliza the Witch Hunter. Coolness. Right, so how did that turn go? Not too bad. Uh, Valeria getting knocked out was a bit grim. But at least she's in the town square now. Uh, she did miss about half a turn. But we did have some good news with um, Eliza and Sarah. Eliza got a few investigations because she found out that Sophie, the midwife, while she's uh, a bit manic, is actually a good girl, which is brilliant. And she got a few extra investigation because of that. And she was able to heal a wound, albeit a bit out of sequence. Um, bu -bu 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 -bu. Sarah. Sarah has unwittingly got an extra wound off Eliza, which is good. And um, she also, it, she was also doing a bit of investigating at the monastery. And she found out from the monks or from uh, some travellers there that the widow... Perhaps the widow was in the monastery. Yes, the widow was in the monastery. Perhaps she was praying to like stop being a drunkard or something like that. And she has joined Sarah, the Bright Witch. So that is really cool, especially as she's got six spirit. So um, if any Barrow Shades come up who you have to fight with spirit, I think we will send the widow and Sarah after them. That'll be cool. And uh, yeah, pretty good. But... We're getting a lot of extra extra health for the Banshee, which isn't good. Um, we've moved our Shadow Trap 1, mainly because Valeria got knocked out. But at least Sarah will get two investigation the start of next turn. So that's pretty cool. There's two investigation for Valeria and Eliza's got two investigation. So that's pretty good as well. So let's see if we can reveal a few more secrets. And let's just keep plodding on. Hopefully not adding too many wounds to the villain. And uh, we'll have to look at... Oh yeah, that was the other thing. Groundskeeper Willie's come out. So he's in the fields. So we're... But I think he can be killed. He can be killed, I think. So if we get... I think you need cunning to kill the groundskeeper. Yes, you do. Who's got the best cunning? Both Valeria and Eliza have got good cunning at three... So perhaps send one of those after him. He's got four fight dice. Mm, yeah. But we'll just have to make sure nobody gets knocked out though because of that Veil of Darkness card. Plus the fact he's a minion. So he'll get plus one combat die because of full moon. So he will get five combat dice instead of four. Damn! Damn, 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 damn. Perhaps we can hang... Perhaps we can avoid him until we get a decent weapon or something. And then uh, we could take him out. Right, okay, that is it for turn two of A Touch of Evil, The Banshee. Thank you very much for watching. Thanks for all the subscriptions, for all the views, and for all the support. It is very much appreciated. Thank you to those people who've popped across the board game links to upvote the site. Thank you very much. And as always, I forgot to say it last time, but I'll say it this time. 
any cock ups please let me know in the comments and I will do my best to fix them as mentioned it is my first playthrough and as you can tell you know I've forgotten a few things I've remembered a few things and gone back and messed around with the sequence as, as I say apologies for that but it is my first time so if there's anything I've missed or any tactical tips that you've got any mistakes I've made please please point them out in the comments as I say I'll try and fix them I will certainly follow any good advice um, like Stasia's and Glenn's and um, a pirate's and uh, the chap who noticed that I was making a mess of the um, lingering rules so thanks very much for all those sort of comments they really do help out but time is against us so I hope you join me for turn three of A Touch of Evil, The Banshee, but until then, this is me, Cat Weasel, signing off, toodaloo.